Well, let's take a look at installing Red Hat Enterprise Linux on our server across the network using a RAID 5 base configuration. Again, this is another certification objective, the ability to define and allocate RAID 5 partitions to a RAID 5 set, which you can then overlay a file system on. So our system's booting up. It'll enumerate the three connected hard drives. Now, for RAID 5 support, you need three hard disks. However, Red Hat Enterprise Linux supports RAID 5, 0, 1, as well as linear and 4. Now, it's easier to allocate RAID 5 partitions with a graphical interface, although it is possible to do so with the text-based interface. So with that said, we won't type Linux text, for example. We'll simply indicate Linux ask method. We have booted with the boot ISO image, which is a network boot image, which will allow us to connect to the HTTP published share and install across the wire. So we're acro installing across the network, as well as provisioning a RAID 5 volume. Also, one other caveat or one other note is that you are unable to assign the boot mount point to a RAID 5 partition. You can, however, assign boot, forward slash boot, which houses the Linux kernel, amongst other things such as the grub files, to a RAID 1 or mirrored partition. So keep that in mind. So when we define our partitions, we'll either have to create two RAID sets, one mirrored for the boot partition, and one RAID 5 for everything else or create a boot mount point on a non-rated partition. That's just a limitation built into Red Hat Enterprise Linux to prevent administrators from clobbering inadvertently their boot mount point. So that's um, let's move forward with our installation. The various drivers are loading. Again, this is a pretty quick system, so it cycles through the boot up initialization process very rapidly as opposed to the VMware instance. Let's tab and select OK for English for the installation process and US for the type of keyboard that we're using. And here are the options we saw during the VMware installation. Again, we'll be willing to select from local, hard drive, NFS, FTP, and HTTP. Since we have the image out on the HTTP Apache server, we'll simply select HTTP. IPv4 and V6 support is enabled by or are enabled by default using DHCP. And now we'll specify the IP address of the server. Followed by the location of the share, which is RH5I386. Once you see that the stage 2 image has been retrieved or is in the process of being retrieved, that tells you that your client, in this case the PowerEdge server, has made a connection to the Apache based server. Because that stage 2 image file does not exist on the local bootable CD ROM, which was created with the boot.iso image located in the images subdirectory beneath the root of the DVD ROM or first CD ROM of the 5 for Red Hat Enterprise Linux version 5, in this case 5.1, major version 5. So now we're launching a graphical installation. And here's the opening menu, and of course the files have to be copied across the wire. And we're using a USB laser mouse. Let's just move forward into the installation. Again, it's easier to configure RAID 5 or any of the RAID levels or even logical volume management using the graphical interface than it is to do so with the text-based interface, but both are possible. Pretty much everything you can do in one interface, you can do in the other. The graphical interface simply presents it in a much more readable fashion. So we'll skip entering the installation number because again, our intent and purpose is to illustrate how to configure RAID 5 and how to install across the network using the boot ISO image. Again, you can boot your system with the DVD-ROM or, or the first CD-ROM and then 
indicate Linux space ask method to have the installer prompt you for where the binary files should be copied from. So we're going to install our Enterprise Linux server, we won't upgrade the existing installation. As you can tell, it has detected the prior installation. Our first installation was performed on this box. Now here are the three hard drives. We can elect to remove all of the Linux partitions or all of the partitions altogether. It's entirely up to us, but we want a custom partitioning scheme. You click the drop box, you'll see use free space, remove all partitions, remove Linux partitions, or create a custom layout altogether. There's also an advanced storage configuration which allows you to connect to iSCSI targets. iSCSI is a hot networking protocol or one of the popular cost-effective ways of connecting to remote storage across the network wire. So keep that in mind if you do have iSCSI targets out there. Let's click on next to move forward in the installation and remove the existing partition layout and set up a new partition layout based on RAID. So in the installer you have the ability to create basic partitions as well as to manipulate them by editing, deleting, resetting them, so on and so forth. If you reset the partition table to its original state, then you'll see momentarily what it does. And we also have the ability to control RAID as well as LVM. So here are the various partitions based on logical volume management. These are the logical volume groups or the LVM groups that are on the system. One group, vol group zero, zero, includes two logical volumes. We should remove those logical volumes and then create RAID 5 based file systems. Let's delete each of these logical volumes. as well as the volume group, you must delete the contained logical volumes before you may delete the volume groups. And here's another volume group, volume group 00. And we'll get rid of this swap partition as well. So we're basically cleaning up manually in order to lay out RAID 5. In your case, you may opt to use free space. Just provision enough partitions, at least three for RAID 5, from your free space. And ideally, the three partitions should be spread across three disks, three physical disks, as opposed to one physical disk, although you can do it if it's on one physical disk. And we can't delete that other partition because it's a part of a volume group, so we need to get rid of the volume group. So as you can see, there are quite a few items here for us to manipulate. Let's try to delete this volume group, which will remove any trace of LVM altogether. And now LVM is gone. So each drive has been e expanded. Let's collapse them. Here are the three drives, SDA, SDB, and SDC. We'll quickly peruse each of the drives to be sure that there are no partitions. Here we see SDC1, which is LVM. We should delete it. We want to get to a state where we have raw partitions, or raw drives with no partitions. So for example, SDC now has free space. That's raw space, which can be assigned to anything, including RAID, LVM, EXT3, or any supported file system. SDB now has free raw space, and SDA has free space, but it also has an LVM physical volume, which we'll delete. So now all three hard drives have free space occupying the 36 gigs, roughly 36 gigs per drive. So we have three 36 gig hard drives. They're physically distinct. This isn't VMware. This is an actual system. And now we can set up our RAID environment. Now to set up RAID, you need to have your partitions set up in such a way so that you can then move on to the RAID section. You create a software RAID partition out of free space that you have and once those software RAID partitions are in place for the desired level, such as RAID 5, you then create a RAID device. Notice that the interface grays out creating a RAID device until you've created one or more RAID partitions. By one or more, we mean enough to support the various levels of RAID. For example, for RAID 0, one or more will suffice. For RAID 1, two or more will suffice. And for RAID 5, three or more will suffice. So to create a software RAID partition, click OK 
and you'll see the different disks that are available. You can include all of them. You can set a size for the software RAID partition up to the maximum size for the desired RAID type. Now by default, all drives are considered to be a part of the software RAID partition, and a default size of 100 megabytes is suggested. Of course, this can be altered. Let's say we wanted a RAID software partition of perhaps 50 gigabytes or 50,000 megabytes. We'd go ahead and specify 50, and this would give us an estimate 1,000 megabytes, and this would be roughly 50 gigabytes. That tells you partitions of software must be constrained to a single drive. This is done by selecting. Now, by default, all drives are considered candidates. So in this case, we have to deselect two of the three drives and then define a given size out of the drive that we've specified, or you can fill it to the maximum allowable size. So it's up to you. Either you fill to the full size of the drive, or you set a fixed size. Now, I prefer to go with fixed size because that leaves us space to create the boot partition outside of this RAID partition. So let's go ahead and indicate 20 gigabytes. Twenty thousand megabytes as a fixed size from the first disk for software RAID. And what you'll now see for the first disk is a software RAID partition with free space. So there's free space that we can use to create a boot partition. And we can do so at any time by clicking on new. And sometimes it helps if you even do it at the beginning of the disk. So let's go ahead and remove this. Although it would still work, it still will boot. And you'll see a graphical layout up top as to how each disk is being used. So for SDA, we'll go ahead and click on New. Any order is fine, especially for modern systems. From the drop list, you'll see the different common mount points. So we'll indicate boot, ext3. By default, again, all of the drives are selected, but we want boot to be constrained to one disk, and we want boot to be 100 megabytes. We can also force it to be a primary partition. Otherwise, the disk druid utility will move the partitions around making some logical whenever necessary. So we've got boot taken care of. Now let's move on to the RAID partition again. So back to RAID. This brings up the RAID wizard. We'll create a software RAID partition. By default, all three candidate drives or all n number of drives are selected. We'll deselect, indicate a size of 20,000 megabytes. This will leave us space to create other partitions. It doesn't need to be a primary partition. Now we've got software RAID 20,000 megabytes on the first disk. Now if we're going to create a RAID 5 set, or striping with parity set, all of the partitions should be of at least the same size. Some may be larger, but they must be at least the same size. So you have to create the partitions to the lowest common denominator. So with SDB, we'll go ahead and launch RAID again. Create a software RAID partition. Deselect SDA as well as SDC. And define the size to be 20,000 again. Click on OK. This will create software RAID on the second drive. We still have got space on the first disk or on a different disk, second or third, for swap space, which we'll look at momentarily. So now we've got two. We could go ahead and create a mirrored RAID set. That would certainly work. However, our intent is to create a RAID 5 set, which is striping with parity, which offers performance enhancers plus greater size allocation. So we lose less storage when we allocate using RAID 5 as opposed to RAID 1, or striping with parity as opposed to mirroring. Let's go ahead and click on RAID again. Notice we now have the ability to create a RAID device because we currently have two software RAID partitions.